Greetings and welcome to a new video about analog electronics and we continue with our JVET circuit examples and this is our second example. In this example I would like to discuss a P-channel JVET circuit and we have then a specific situation also here for the condition like the pinch off and also the drain current. Of course we will look at our calculation step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit and also the given values. Before we move on, let's look at the P-channel JFET in briefly uh, situation here. We have now this JFET here, which is a P-channel. It was in the first example, an uh, N-channel, and this arrow where it was going in the gate, now it is going out of the gate. That is the sort of the symbol to make a P-channel JFET. You see also that the gate to source is now giving here, so this part is node is now the source and this is now the drain so it is flipped actually here and this VSD is now here shown instead of VDS so that's also flipped and we also see that the source current here is going in here and it was before it was the source current going out actually so it is all reversed sort of the PMP and the NPM variations of the BGT transistor also, we apply the positive voltage at the source from the source resistor to the to the this node instead of at the drain node. So that is also flipped. So everything is actually the same. Procedure is the same. All the parameters are again uh, reversed. What you also see is that for the P channel, that the pinch of voltage is positive, so it is not a minus, a negative value, and also the drain to source current with a gate shorted so this maximum value for the drain current is also given here which is still a positive value which is in this case 4 milliamps so we have the vss which is our dc voltage 20 volts we have also some values here and this is a kind of a design example so let's read the calculations calculate the r1 r2 and the rs so these three resistors are unknown but given the id must be one milliamp the vsd the between these two nodes must be 14 volts and we have an i1 which is the current here flowing through r1 what is will, will be 200 microamps and this is the information for the p channel jfet okay let's now look at the situation so how can we work this out now before we move on let's also look at the voltage the current voltage characteristics of this p channel jfet we know it is a pinch of voltage of 2 volts, plus 2 volts, that is now shown here. So it is now 2 volts. And we also have the IDSS, which is 4 milliamps. So those are shown here. So we have now the boundary, two boundaries here, and this is the curve in between. And this curve is given by a square law expression we will show you shortly. Now, we will discuss this also where we get more information. Now, let's look at the solution before we look at the... All the values let's also set up the Kirchhoff's voltage low at the output loop because there we have the most of the information from the given value so if I set up the Kirchhoff voltage low KVL at the output starting from here and then make this loop here actually you see VSS is equal to the voltage across RS plus the voltage VSD that's shown here now we know VSD we know VSS we also know the IS because IS is equal to I D. So we can say everything is here known except RS. That's why we actually start with this one. So if I now also replace IS by ID and also substitute the values and also express actually before that the RS in terms of the rest of the values, you will have 20 minus 14 over 1 milliamp. And it will give us exactly 6 kilo ohm. So we have now one of the unknowns here for this calculation. Okay, now the drain current, as said before, this is the square law of business for the JFETs, and this is the ID, it's equal to the IEDSS, which is the maximum current for the JFET, and times 1 minus the VGS over the pinch of voltage quantity squared. So we have this expression, we can use that to calculate then the required value, such that the VGS, for example, is known for the future calculations. Now, in this, calc in this expression, we know actually everything except the VGS. So if I now substitute the 0.001 and 0.004 here for the IDSS and also the pinch of voltage which is plus 2 then I can calculate this one. Step by step we will then divide now the 0.001 by 0.004 so we will have this expression 
That will be 1 over 4, so I will move to that one. Then we will take the square root of the left and right hand side. Then the square root of the 1 over 4 is 0 0.5. So we'll have this. Now the 0 0.5 is then 1 minus the VGS over 2. Then the VGS will be then equal to 1 volt exactly. Okay, that's what we have now. We have now our VGS. Why do we need that VGS? Because that will allow us to calculate now the VG and then the other values for the resistors R1 and R2. Okay, and now let's also look at the graph because now we have this 1 volt for the VGS. That means the 1 volt here is exactly in, bet between, in the middle. So we have now here this 1 volt and that will re respond or that corresponds to a current ID of 1 milliamp which is shown here. So we can also recognize that from the graph. Okay, let's now also develop the Kirchhoff's voltage law at the left part. I mean this part, this branch or this column for the circuit. We recognize following the gate current here is zero. So I can set up the equation, again Kirchhoff's voltage law, by saying Vss is equal to the voltage across R1 plus the voltage across R2. And I can also consider that the gate current is zero. And that will be then this. But since the gate current is zero, I can say that I1 is equal to I2. So there's no current here in this branch. Kind of an open circuit. Then we can set up and then say I1 is also equal to I2. So we can just say I1 times R1 plus I1 times R2. Now let's bring them together, R1 and R2, in one fraction. You will get this expression. Now we can calculate the R1 plus R2 as a combination. We don't know the unique values, but we know the summation now. So the R1 plus R2 will be then VSS over the current given, which is 200 microamps. So it will be then 20 over 200 times 10 to the power of minus 6. That will give us exactly 100 kilo ohms. So the summation of the R1 and R2, the, the, the two resistors added, will be 100 kilo ohms. We don't know yet what the uh, individual values are, but we know the sum of them. Okay. Let's now bring, bring up the values we have so far. R1 plus R2 is known, RS is known individually, and we have also the VGS of 1 volts. So what can we do in order to continue? Now we know we not want R1 and R2 separately, so we need to move on and also develop somewhere else the Kirchhoff's voltage law, and that is in this branch, for example. So going actually from this ground up to G, and then going from the VGS, junction and then the VSD junction and going back to the ground. So you actually make now a first full circle. You can also make this circle or this loop. That's also possible, but it's longer, but you get the exact same result. So I will do that. I will go from G, point G here, and then end at the VSD. So VG is equal to VGS plus VSD. You see that? So this voltage is the voltage here plus the voltage across this junction. I know actually everything here because the VSD was already given and the VGS was calculated. So I can say 1 plus 14 will be 15 volts. So at this note I will have a 15 volts. Now we have enough information to calculate the I1 and I2. Okay, let's use the voltage divider rule here. You can say, okay, the current and the voltage at this node, for example, is R2 over R1 plus R2 times VSS because this is completely a serial connection since the gate current is a zero. This is known, this is also known, and we also know the summation. So let's bring that up. Now we have 15 is equal to R2 over 10 to the power 5 times 20. And if you now do the math here, you will get exactly 75 kilo ohms for R2. You can also do it in a different way. You can say I will use ohms law here. I know the current, which is 0. 2 milliamps or 200 microamps. You also know the voltage. You can say the voltage at this node divided by this current will give you also 75 kilo ohms. So that is in a different way. Now we have the 75 kilo ohms here. That means the R1 can be now calculated by using this summation. R1 is equal to 10 to the power of 5 minus R2. They will give us 25 kilo ohms. So we have now everything. Let's bring everything here together. These are the values for our resistors and these are the values for the voltages, VGS and VG. Okay, okay. let's also look at our simulation results. We see here the RS of six kilo ohms as calculated. We have the 25 kilo ohms for the R1 and 75 kilo ohms for the R2 also as calculated. We have a voltage meter here between the gate and the source. You see also the voltmeter between the source and the drain, VSD. 
You also the current arrow going down for the drain current. You see also the IS, so this is the source current. You also see another current arrow to measure the current in the gate going out of the gate. You also see here a current arrow I1 to measure the current here. So everything is actually shown. And what we see is we really want to have an ID of 1 milliamp that's shown here. I milliamp, 1 milliamp here, IS, but also ID. You see that the gate current is indeed very, very small. So as assumed as zero, it's very close to zero, 16.02 picoamps. So we can consider that as zero. We SDS as required 14 volts. I1 as required 200 microamps. It's shown here. We also see here VG as 15 volts as calculated. We also see the VGS as one volt, so 1000 millivolts. And this is all verified now here for these circuit. Now, Let's also look at the model of this v, uh, the P-channel MOSFET that's actually shown in our TINA TI SPICE simulator. One thing here is the threshold voltage, which is shown here as a negative, but it is considered by the simulator as a positive. So you need to still uh, type in here a negative value, even though it is a positive in our also that data sheet. In order, in order to also reflect that IDSS of this P-channel, the parameter, you need to uses beta, which is the formula here, IDSS over the pinch of voltage squared. So our IDSS was 0 0.004 and the pinch of voltage was plus two. So you do you work it out in this beta, that is the one milliamps per square volts. This beta is again, not the current gate of the, uh, the BGT. All right, guys, this is now our example of the P channel uh, JFET circuit having these resistors uh, to be calculated given the values here. So it is a design example for this specific situation. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about these examples or with the videos we have on our channel, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.